And this is just a quick little aid here. Um, I know some younger students. And this is old stuff to high school students. This is a protractor. This is how you find a 90 degree angle from this little point here. To there. This is a 90 degrees, right? And to here, it's 30 degrees. Okay, so that's a protractor. That's what that's for. I was just using it to make lines to points on here. And this is a compass, a, uh, a drawing compass, not a uh, um, orienteering compass. Now, what I'm doing here is I've made making. I had a failure, of, another failure of imagination last night. I was really tired, and I thought, well, maybe these are centers. They're not, so I just kind of went, I don't. So I'm ready, ready to hit this one again. These are four things that are going to be exactly the same, although they're mirror images of each other. And this is going to be monochromatic, and this is in watercolor. This is going to be hard. And I'm giving the option of working in gouache so that they can actually mix their whites instead. That's very challenging, and if you've got your washes down, you'll be able to do it. And if not, it's going to be hard. And I don't want it to be hard. I want it to be enjoyable because color is so much fun. Monochromatic, one color. Then you're going to take that same color here and do an analogous. You're going to take that color and the two colors on each side of it on the color wheel. Complementary, you're going to take that color and its opposite, and you may use those in here. And then the last one will be a split complementary or a perfected, which is two complementary colors and then the colors on each side of one of those. Um, these need to be broken up into enough pieces to really uh, stretch your abilities on making grays, dark uh, tints, shades, and darks and lights in a unified composition. And part of the unity will be because they're mirror imaging each other and one color is the base of all of it. So there's already a built-in unity to this. The reason I want to do geometric instead of I was thinking of a lifeguard tower or something, it really needs to be non-objective to force yourself to study the colors because you get into shading and distance and different considerations when you have an object. So just break it up into as many pieces as possible. Right now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Only ten. That's not enough. So um, what I've done here is first I measured off the uh, five and a half inch squares. We were working on uh, eight and a half by eleven paper, so I made it that way. I could have taken up the whole amount with uh, larger ones. So those are the same. Measured that off, and then I made these to break it up. And these were already there. Uh, the next thing I did was put in the compass and make This circle here and this nice compass tells us that it's in centimeters is three and three quarters, 3.75 centimeter radius. Okay, so you do that. Now you've got some intersecting lines and a circle. That means some things have crossed. So these, where's the protractor? It's transparent. Um, connected those intersecting lines and then I used the compass 
Have to be very careful. Put it right on the edge of the paper and hold it carefully. For that, 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 and that. And then I connected those. Then I thought, ooh, if I could make a circle in the middle of each, that'd be nice. But this is not the right size for that. That would have to intersect there. Yeah, let's do that. See, it makes it look like it's behind that. Maybe not. Because that might be too big. But anyway, let's go with that for now. So. Everything you do, you just repeat all the way around. It's not easy. <laughs> So here I've added a couple of more spaces. Okay, and then these, connecting these. Oh, and by connecting those also, I have found the center of those squares. So what's going to happen if I do this from the center? I could make a little circle. I could make a circle that touches these circles. Or I could do a circle that intersects these. There we go. Goes off the page though. What happens if I go here? That's close enough to intersecting. I like that. So now we've broken it up into one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Did I count these? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen spaces. So you've got more mixing opportunities there. Same size compass goes right in the middle. When I work, I like to work clockwise. I'm going to fudge it out a little. Just a little. Oh, no, it's not supposed to be there. I'm going to have to get a good eraser. I like those white erasers I have when it comes in a stick. Okay, so pay attention. All right, it's going to go from there. No, it isn't. It's going to go. to there. Uh-oh. Oops! Wrong middle. Okay. Right now, I'm going to pause and I'm going to go get my eraser. I really love this kind of eraser. I also like to use it for crossword puzzles and Sudoku, but it erases very nice and cleanly. So this one was completely, it was the right side, no, 
I have the wrong uh, this is why you do all four at once too okay this one should not be in there but it was the right size yeah yeah you don't want to erase your paper too much either because it roughens it up and then it changes the color. So this one just stops at the big circle. E. Outside the big circle. There we go. And then if it's off a little bit, it doesn't matter. Notice I'm brushing with the back of my hand, too, because there's your fingers can be oily. But, as I learned in my 8th grade drafting class, if you do this and you've got nail polish on, you wipe red stripes all over <laughs> your nice, clean paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the middle here. So I need to go back to this. to get what I figured was the right size. Okay. And it really is just inside the edge of the paper. That looks good. So we go across these circles to break them up, but we stop at the big circle. Oop! Okay. That one's okay. Mm, that's the middle. And we stop. At the big circle. Done. Okay. That's done. Now... I want to do something with these funny looking shapes. They look like bathing suit bottoms. <laughs> um, perhaps if I were to make a big half circle. It's not going to go through those. That might look weird. What if I try to attach these two? That's not going to do anything to that. I need to do something to that. What if I came halfway through there? Or... So there aren't any points in those to match up anything with. So well what would happen if we just did this? okay and then leave that space there too for a little interest okay so there's one of them here and one of them here and Uh, 
that's easy enough. Okay, one of them there. And one of them there. So this thing is moving in and out. That might be a little bit weird. Okay. Mm. Now, I kind of want to see a circle go through there. So you don't really need a plan when you do this. You just start. And you start connecting points. Let's see now. If I make a circle, it touches there. Now, when painting, you have your choices, too, of whether to connect those or not. Still, now it needs more in the middle to break it up. See how many points intersect here. That one should be intersecting with them. Excuse me. Also, with more things broken up, then you can work. Some of this is going to be in layers. You're going to have to let it dry. But you can also be, once you get a big layer done, you can be working in little parts. Well, you just work around clock clockwise, connecting intersecting elements, and you've got a great little mandala work work up here for color theory. Oh, it's so much fun! Now I'm looking forward to doing this one. And when you finish doing just the flat work, and we look at it and think about it, then you can take your little white pens and embellish it like uh, on Indian mandala or something. And it still needs more. I would like to have a triangle somewhere. Oh, we can make a triangle. with the radius. Now I need to start from here to make it. I think, yeah. One, two. You know about this? Probably it's called a compass rose. This is not exact, because pi is not, is not exactly three, so I'm going to whoop it up a little bit there and go from here. Yeah. 
six. So it goes around six times what it's like. What's pi? 3.14 and a lot of numbers. Approximately three. All right, here's our triangle. We made six points, but here uh, we made them on this circle. Here to here. To here. Whoops, sorry, sorry. I'm going to just use that along the bottom to make it nice. <laughs> there. That's good. Then keep these two the same line. They're not exactly, but... If you want to get fancy, you can connect the other ones too and make a six pointed star. I'm interested how these come out pretty well. Even with that, okay. Well, you got a pretty well broken up mandala now. Want to do anything down here? More circles, like a little circle. I guess that's okay. I don't know. Maybe I want... I don't know. Let's see. Let's think of it in terms of just one composition here. I think I need something with an X up here. There is one X. Something block shaped up there. Yeah, there we go. This is A block here, a corner block. One, one. Four. 
So I just use these intersections to make those. That's good. And then maybe an X. Yes. No, I don't like that. Circles inside those squares. We probably need a circle in the middle. Yes, that's pretty. That's almost the same size. That's nice. Oh, if you put this right here on the corner, oh, I don't like that. Okay, I think I've taken it as far as I can go right now, and I might just start in. Okay, as in terms of doing this in watercolor, this is really not easy. Number one, decide where your whites are going to be, okay? Let me talk about... Protecting your whites. And remember, you can always go darker. So here, I am going to start with blue because I have the biggest, we have the biggest range. You could also use violet. Got a big range on that. It's a dark color. So, because I'm going to use blue, which is a dark color, I'm going to start with the very lightest wash. Since it is a monochromatic, I might as well just paint the whole thing in a very, very light wash. Very light wash. One of those, just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there kind of washes. And then I think I'll go over it, and I will call that white. I'm going to call that white. I'm not going to have any stark white on it. So I'll just do a very quick wash. This is a really strange looking structure over here. Oh, this is part of the star. Okay. So. Um, I think I will meditate on where my whites might be, or I'm just going to go with that blue. You know what else I'm going to do? I think I might take one light blue, blue wash and go everywhere with it and say, okay, that's going to be underlying everything. So it's going to be there in the analogous, it's going to be there in the complementary, it's going to be there in the split complementary. Okay. And since it'll be light-ish, the other colors are going to blend with it. So think in layers. Um, I mentioned this before. I have a lot of printmaking friends, and some of them do watercolors. Um, everybody I know with a printmaking background does watercolors pretty much the same way. Layers. We can think in layers. You have to for printmaking. You've got to make each plate or stone or screen do the most work it possibly can to mix with the other colors. All right, I'm done with this, and I will do a separate one for color.